Hoysala Architecture Hoysala Architecture is the building style developed under the rule of the Hoysala Empire between the 11th and 14th centuries, in the region known today as Karnataka, a state of India. Hoysala influence was at its peak in the 13th century, when it dominated the southern Deccan Plateau region. Large and small temples built during this era remain as examples of the Hoysala architectural style, including the Chenakseva Temple at Balur, the Hoysaleswara Temple at Halabiju, and the Kesava Temple at Samanathapura. Other examples of Hoysala craftsmanship are the temples at Balavadi, Amrathapura, Hosahoalu, Mosale, Arasakar, Basaralu, Kikri, and Nugahali. Study of the Hoysala architectural style has revealed a negligible Indo-Aryan influence while the impact of Southern Indian style is more distinct. Temples built prior to Hoysala independence in the mid-12th century reflect significant Western Chalukya influences, while later temples retain some features salient to Western Chalukya architecture but have additional inventive decoration and ornamentation, features unique to Hoysala artisans. Some 300 temples are known to survive in present-day Karnataka state and many more are mentioned in inscriptions, though only about 70 have been documented. The greatest concentration of these are in the Malnad, Hill, districts the native home of the Hoysala kings. Hoysala architecture is classified by the influential scholar Adam Hardy as part of the Karnata Dravida tradition, a trend within Dravidian architecture in Thdekan that is distinct from the Tamil style of further south. Other terms for the tradition are Vasara, and Shalukya architecture, divided into early Badami Shalukya architecture and the western Shalukya architecture which immediately preceded the Hoysalas. The whole tradition covers a period of about seven centuries began in the 7th century under the patronage of the Shalukya dynasty of Badami, developed further under the Rashtrakutas of Manukata during 9th and 10th centuries and the western Shalukyas, or later Shalukyas, of Basavakalyan in the 11th and 12th centuries. Its final development stage and transformation into an independent style was during the rule of the Hoysalas in the 12th and 13th centuries. Medieval inscriptions displayed prominently at temple locations give information about donations made toward the maintenance of the temple, details of consecration, and on occasion, even architectural details. Hinduism is a combination of secular and sacred beliefs, rituals, daily practices and traditions that has evolved over the course of over 2,000 years and embodies complex symbolism combining the natural world with philosophy. Hindu temples began as simple shrines housing a deity and by the time of the Hoysalas had evolved into well-articulated edifices in which worshippers saw transcendence of the daily world. Hoysala temples were not limited to any specific organized tradition of Hinduism and encouraged pilgrims of different Hindu devotional movements. The Hoysalas usually dedicated their temples to Shiva or to Vishnu, two of the popular Hindu gods, but they occasionally built some temples dedicated to the Jain faith as well. Worshippers of Shiva are called Shaivas and worshippers of Vishnu are called Vaishnavas. While King Vishnu Vardhana and his descendants were Vaishnava by faith, records show that the Hoysalas maintained religious harmony by building as many temples dedicated to Shiva as they did to Vishnu. Most of these temples have secular features with broad themes depicted in their sculptures. This can be seen in the famous Chenak Seva temple at Balur dedicated to Vishnu and in the Hoysaleswara temple at Halabiju dedicated to Shiva. The Kesava temple at Samanathapura is different in that its ornamentation is strictly Vaishnavan. Generally Vaishnava temples are dedicated to Keshava, or to Chenakashava, meaning beautiful Vishnu, while a small number are dedicated to Lakshminarayana and Lakshminarasama, Narayana and Narasimha both being avatars, or physical manifestations, of Vishnu with Lakshmi, consort of Vishnu, seated at his feet. Temples dedicated to Vishnu are always named after the deity. The Shiva temples have a Shiva Linka, symbol of fertility and the universal symbol of Shiva, in the shrine. The names of Shiva temples can end with the suffix Seshwara meaning Lord of. The name Hoysaleswara, for instance, means Lord of Hoysala. The temple can also be named after the devotee who commissioned construction of the temple, an example being the Bhusesvara temple at Kuruvangala. Named after the devotee Pusi. The most striking sculptural decorations are the horizontal rows of moldings with detailed relief, and intricately carved images of gods, goddesses, and their attendants on the outer temple wall panels. The Dada Gadavali Lakshmi Devi, goddess of wealth, temple is an exception as it is dedicated to neither Vishnu nor Shiva. The defeat of the Jain Western Ganga dynasty, of present day South Karnataka. By the Cholas in the early 11th century and the rising numbers of followers of Vaishnava Hinduism and Varashaivism in the 12th century was mirrored by a decreased interest in Jainism. However, 
Two notable locations of Jain worship in the Hoysala territory were Shravana Belikala and Kambada Ali. The Hoysalas built Jain temples to satisfy the needs of its Jain population, a few of which have survived in Halabija containing icons of Jain tire thankaras. They constructed stepped wells called Pushkarni or Kalyani, the ornate tank at Hulakar being an example. The tank has 12 minor shrines containing Hindu deities. The two main deities found in Hoysala temple sculpture are Shiva and Vishnu in their various forms and avatars, incarnations. Shiva is usually shown with four arms holding a trident and a small drum among other emblems that symbolize objects worshipped independently of the divine image with which they are associated. Any male icon portrayed in this way is Shiva although a female icon may sometimes be portrayed with these attributes as Shiva's consort, Parvati. Various depictions of Lord Shiva exist, showing him naked, fully or partially, in action such as slaying a demon, Andaka, or dancing on the head of a slain elephant, Gajasura, and holding its skin up behind his back. He is often accompanied by his consort Parvati or shown with Nandi the bull. He may be represented as Bhairava, another of Shiva's many manifestations. A male figure depicted holding certain objects such as a conch, symbol of eternal, heavenly space, and a wheel, eternal time and destructive power, is Vishnu. If a female figure is depicted holding these objects, she is seen as his consort, Lakshmi. In all the depictions, Vishnu is holding four objects a conch, a wheel, a lotus and a kamodaki, mace. These can be held in any of the icon's hands, making possible 24 different forms of Vishnu, each with a unique name. Apart from these, Vishnu is depicted in any of his 10 avatars, which include Vishnu sitting on Ananta, the celestial snake and keeper of life energy also known as Shesha, Vishnu with Lakshmi seated on his lap, Lakshmi Narayana, with the head of a lion disemboweling a demon on his lap, Lakshmi Narasama with head of a boar walking over a demon, Varaha, in the Krishna avatar, as Venu Gopala or the cowherder playing the Venu, flute, dancing on the head of the snake Kaliya, lifting a hill such as Govardhana, with his feet over head of a small figure, Vamana, along with Indra riding an elephant, with Lakshmi seated on Garuda, and the eagle, stealing the Parjata tree. The focus of a temple is the center or sanctum sanctorum, Garbhagraha where the image of the deity resides, so temple architecture is designed to move the devotee from outside to the Garbhagraha through ambulatory passageways for circumambulation and halls or chambers, mantapas, that become increasingly sacred as the deity is approached. Hoysala temples have distinct parts that are merged to form a unified organic whole, in contrast to the temples of Tamil country where different parts of the temple stand independently. Although superficially unique, Hoysala temples resemble each other structurally. They are characterized by a complex profusion of sculpture decorating all the temple parts chiseled of soft soapstone, chloritic schist, a good material for intricate carving, executed mostly by local craftsmen, and exhibit architectural features that distinguish them from other temple architectures of South India. Most Hoysala temples have a plain covered entrance porch supported by lathe turned, circular or bell shaped, pillars which were sometimes further carved with deep fluting and molded with decorative motifs. The temples may be built upon a platform raised by about a meter called a jagati. The jagati, apart from giving the raised look to the temple, serves as a production apatha or circumambulation path for circumambulation around the temple, as the garbhagraha, inner sanctum, provides no such feature. Such temples will have an additional set of steps leading to an open mantapa, open hall, with parapet walls. A good example of this style is the case of a temple at Samanathapura. The Jagati which is in unity with the rest of the temple follows a star-shaped design and the walls of the temple follow a zigzag pattern, a hoysala innovation. Devotees can first complete a ritual circumambulation on the Jagati starting from the main entrance by walking in a clockwise direction, towards the left before entering the mantapa, following the sculptural clockwise sequenced reliefs on the outer temple walls depicting a sequence of epic scenes from the Hindu epics. Temples that are not built on a Jagati can have steps flanked by elephant balustrades, parapets, that lead to the mantapa from ground level. An example of a temple that does not exhibit a raised platform is the Bhusesvara temple in Korvangala, Hassan district. In temples with two shrines, Devakuda, the Vimanas, the shrines or Sali, may be placed either next to each other or on opposite sides. The Lakshmi Devi temple at Dandagadavali is unique to Hoysala architecture as it has four shrines around a common center and a fifth shrine within the same complex for the deity Bhairava, a form of Shiva. In addition, four minor shrines exist at each corner of the courtyard, Prakaram, 
The mentapa is the hall where groups of people gather during prayers. The entrance to the mentapa normally has a highly ornate overhead lintel colada makara turana, makara is an imaginary beast and turana is an overhead decoration. The open mentapa which serves the purpose of an outer hall outer mentapa, is a regular feature in larger hoysala temples leading to an inner small closed mentapa and the shrine apostrophe s. The open mentapas which are often spacious have seating areas, asana. Made of stone with the mentapas parapet wall acting as a backrest. The seats may follow the same staggered square shape of the parapet wall. The ceiling here is supported by numerous pillars that create many bays. The shape of the open mentapa is best described as staggered square and is the style used in most hoysala temples. Even the smallest open mentapa has 13 bays. The walls have parapets that have half pillars supporting the outer ends of the roof, which allow plenty of light, making all the sculptural details visible. The mentapa ceiling is generally ornate with sculptures, both mythological and floral. The ceiling consists of deep endomical surfaces and contains sculptural depictions of banana bud motifs and other such decorations. If the temple is small, it will consist of only a closed mentapa, enclosed with walls extending all the way to the ceiling, and the shrine. The closed mentapa, well decorated inside and out, is larger than the vestibule connecting the shrine and the mentapa and has four lathe turn pillars to support the ceiling which may be deeply domed. The four pillars divide the hall into nine bays. The nine bays result in nine decorated ceilings. Pierced stone screens, jolly or latticework, that serve as windows in the Navaranga, Hall, and Saba Mantapa, Congregation Hall, is a characteristic Hoysala stylistic element. A porch adorns the entrance to a closed mantapa, consisting of an awning supported by two half pillars, engaged columns, and two parapets, all richly decorated. The closed mentapa is connected to the shrines by a vestibule, a square area that also connects the shrines. Its outer walls are decorated, but as the size of the vestibule is not large, this may not be a conspicuous part of the temple. The vestibule also has a short tower called the Sukhanasi or nose upon which is mounted the Hoysala emblem. In Balur and Halabiju, these sculptures are quite large and are placed at all doorways. The outer and inner mentapa, open and closed, have circular lathe turn pillars having four brackets at the top. Over each bracket stands sculptured figures called Salabanjika or Madonaga. The pillars may also exhibit ornamental carvings on the surface and not woe pillars are alike. This is how Hoysala art differs from the work of their early overlords, the Western Shalukyas, who added sculptural details to the circular pillar base and left the top plane. The lathe turn pillars are 16, 32, or 64 pointed. Some are bell-shaped and have properties that reflect light. The Parsvanatha Pasadi at Halabiju is a good example. According to Brown, the pillars with four monolithic brackets above them carry images of Salabanjikas and Madonikas, sculpture of a woman, displaying stylized feminine features. This is a common feature of Shalukya Hoysala temples. According to Sastri, the shape of the pillar in its capital, the base of which is square and whose shaft is a monolith that is lathe turned to render different shapes is a remarkable feature of Hoysala art. The Vimana, also called the Sela, contains the most sacred shrine wherein resides the image of the presiding deity. The Vimana is often topped by a tower which is quite different on the outside than on the inside. Inside, the Vimana is plain and square, whereas outside it is profusely decorated and can be either stellate, star-shaped, or shaped as a staggered square, or feature a combination of these designs giving it many projections and recesses that seem to multiply as the light falls on it. Each projection and recess has a complete decorative articulation that is rhythmic and repetitive and composed of blocks and moldings, obscuring the tower profile. Depending on the number of shrines, and hence on the number of towers, the temples are classified as a Kakuta, 1, Divakuta, 2, Trikuta, 3, Chatushkuta, 4, and Panchakuta, 5. Most Hoysala temples are Akakuta, Devakuta or Trikuta, the Vaishnava ones mostly being Trikuta. There are cases where a temple is Trikuta but has only one tower over the main shrine, in the middle. So the terminology Trikuta may not be literally accurate. In temples with multiple disconnected shrines, such as the twin temples at Mosail, all essential parts are duplicated for symmetry and balance. The highest point of the temple, Kalasa has the shape of a water pot and stands on top of the tower. This portion of the Vimana is often lost due to age and has been replaced with a metallic pinnacle. Below the Colossa is a large, highly sculptured structure resembling a dome which is made from large stone sand looks like a helmet. It may be 2 meters by 2 meters in size and follows the shape of the shrine.
Below the structure are domed roofs in a square plan, all of them much smaller and crowned with small colises. They are mixed with other small roofs of different shapes and are ornately decorated. The tower of the shrine usually has three or four tiers of rows of decorative roofs while the tower on top of the Sukhanasi has one less tier, making the tower look like an extension of the main tower, Fikima calls it the nose. One decorated roof tier runs on top of the wall of a closed mantapa above the heavy eaves of an open mantapa and above the porches. Below the superstructure of the Vimana are temple eaves projecting half a meter from the wall. Below the eaves two different decorative schemes may be found, depending on whether a temple was built in the early or the later period of the empire. In the early temples built prior to the 13th century, there is one even below this are decorative miniature towers. A panel of Hindu deities and their attendants are below these towers, followed by a set of five different moldings forming the base of the wall. In the later temples there is a second eave running about a meter below the upper eaves with decorative miniature towers placed between them. The wall images of gods are below the lower eaves, followed by six different moldings of equal size. This is broadly termed horizontal treatment. The six moldings at the base are divided in two sections. Going from the very base of the wall, the first horizontal layer contains a procession of elephants, above which are horsemen and then a band of foliage. The second horizontal section has depictions of the Hindu epics and Puranic scenes executed with detail. Above this are two friezes of Yali S or Makara S imaginary beasts, and hamsas, swans. The Vimana, tower, is divided into three horizontal sections and is even more ornate than the walls. In Hoysala art Hardy identifies two conspicuous departures from the more austere western, later, Shalukya art ornamental elaboration and a profusion of iconography with figure sculptures, both of which are found in abundance even on the superstructure over the shrine. Their medium, the soft chlorite schist, soapstone, enabled the virtuoso carving style. Hoysala artists are noted for their attention to sculptural detail be it in the depiction of themes from the Hindu epics and deities or in their use of motifs such as Yali, Kurdamika, Gargoyles, Edicula, miniature decorative towers on Balaster, Makara, Aquatic Monster, Birds, Hamsa, Spiral Foliage, Animals such as Lions, Elephants and Horses, and even general aspects of daily life such as hairstyles and folk. Salabhanjika a common form of Hoysala sculpture, is an old Indian tradition going back to Buddhist sculpture. Sala is the Sala tree and Banjika is the chaste maiden. In the Hoysala idiom, Madanaka figures are decorative objects put at an angle on the outer walls of the temple near the roof so that worshippers circumambulating the temple can view them. This Tamba Bhattalak has our pillar images that show traces of Kola art in the Shalukian touches. Some of the artists working for the Hoysalas may have been from Kola country, a result of the expansion of the empire into Tamil-speaking regions of southern India. The image of Mohini on one of the pillars in the Mantapa, closed hall, of the Chenakeshava temple is an example of Kola art. General life themes are portrayed on wall panels such as the way horses were reined, the type of stirrup used, the depiction of dancers, musicians, instrumentalists and rows of animals such as lions and elephants, where no two animals are identical. Perhaps no other temple in the country depicts the Ramayana and Mahabharata epics more effectively than the Hoysale Shwara temple at Halabaju. Erotica was a subject the Hoysala artist handled with discretion. There is no exhibitionism in this, and erotic themes were carved into recesses and niches, generally miniature in form, making them inconspicuous. These erotic representations are associated with the Shakta practice. Apart from these sculptures, entire sequences from the Hindu epics, commonly the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, have been sculpted in a clockwise direction starting at the main entrance. The right-to-left sequence is the same direction taken by the devotees in their ritual circumambulation as they wind inward toward the inner sanctum. Depictions from mythology such as the epic hero Arjuna shooting fish, the elephant-headed god Ganesha, the sun god Surya, the weather and war god Indra, and Brahma with Saraspati are common. Also frequently seen in these temples is Durga, with several arms holding weapons given to her by other gods, in the act of killing a buffalo, a demon in a buffalo's form, and Hari Haran, a fusion of Shiva and Vishnu, holding a conch, wheel and trident. Many of these friezes were signed by the artisans, the first known instance of signed artwork in India. According to Setter, surveys in modern times have indicated that 1,000 to 1,500 structures were built by the Hoysalas of which about a hundred temples have a survived to date. The Hoysala style is an offshoot of the Western Chalukya style, which was popular in the 10th and 11th centuries. It is distinctively Dravidian, 
and according to Brown, owing to its features, Hoysala architecture qualifies as an independent style. While the Hoysalas introduced innovative features into their architecture, they also borrowed features from earlier builders of Karnata like the Kadambas, Western Chalukyas. These features included a use of chloritic schist or soapstone as a basic building material. Other features were the stepped style of Vimana tower called the Kadamba Shikara, which was inherited from the Kadambas. Hoysala sculptors made use of the effect of light and shade on carved walls, which poses a challenge for photography of the temples. The artistry of the Hoysalas and stone has been compared to the finesse of an ivory worker or goldsmith. The abundance of jewelry worn by the sculpted figures and the variety of hairstyles and headdresses depicted give a fair idea of the lifestyles of the Hoysala times. While medieval Indian artisans preferred to remain anonymous, Hoysala artisans signed their works, which has given researchers details about their lives, families, guilds, etc. Apart from the architects and sculptors, people of other guilds such as goldsmiths, ivory carvers, carpenters, and silversmiths also contributed to the completion of temples. The artisans were from diverse geographical backgrounds and included famous locals. Prolific architects included Amarashil Pai a native of Kedala in Tumkur district, who also built temples for the western Chalukyas. Rivari Malithama built the Kesava temple at Samanathapura and worked on 40 other monuments, including the Amrutshwara temple at Amrathapura. Malithama specialized in ornamentation, and his works spanned six decades. His sculptures were typically signed in shorthand as Mali or simply Ma. Disoha and his son Shavana from Balagavi were the architects of Chanak Seva temple at Balur. Daroha was the chief architect of the Hoysales Wara Temple at Halabiju. Their influence is seen in other temples built by the Hoysales as well. Names of other locals found in inscriptions are Maridama, Vekoha, Kataya, Nanjaya, and Bema, Malaja, Nadoha, Sidoha, Masanathama, Kamiya, and Ramiya. Artists from Tamil country included Palavachari and Kalavachari. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.